Yeah, my ideal engineering leader is certainly somebody that's got the engineering background uh, to understand what's going on within their particular uh, uh, area of uh, focus. Uh, but there's also the leadership skills that are required in order to make that person um, work better with teams. So whether they're an individual contributor and taking on a leadership role within that team uh, or whether they're a direct manager with a team of people, uh, they need to have the skills to be able to get those folks to want to follow uh, the path or strategy that that engineering leader has taken. And so the person needs to have those skill sets in order to do that. Otherwise, um, you'll get uh, where, where nobody wants to, to, to follow you where you're going. You know, leadership is important. And so you, you think of individuals that can communicate well, have a sense of purpose, you know, understand the mission and can stay focused, you know, that are candid, you know, because a lot of it is, is trust in order to be a leader. You know, your team has to trust you, but also have uh, the idea that you will lead them in the right direction. So capability is another key attribute of a leader. So uh, I think some of the soft skills uh, that an engineering leader needs uh, to complement their technical skills are um, items like um, interpersonal relationships, uh, communication skills, um, very, very important aspects of working together. If you're trying to articulate something to somebody and it's in a way that maybe they're not comprehending, then you're really not communicating very well. And in, in today's environment, uh, communication um, is, I think, one of the most uh, more important uh, skills. At the end, usually it settles down to something that sounds kind of superficial, but it's not. It, it'll be a comment at the end, something like, I just like him or I like her. And, and what they mean by that is, can I work next to this person? When this person gets put onto my team, or if I'm gonna be on this person's team, is that team more functional or more dysfunctional because of them? And that really goes into all of those skills that you're talking about, where it comes to communication, where it comes to um, being able to have a legitimate conflict with someone and not, not let it get personal and keep it professional. All these various things that, uh, that really don't come from a, an area of, of technical expertise. I believe in the business community today, uh, there's a lot of collaboration, you know, even in the, the engineering arena. Okay, in order for that to, to foster and be successful, you know, it's important, you know, that engineers have that good technical background. I believe that's a cornerstone. You know, but with that collaboration, you know, is a need for leadership. You know, someone that understands the, the overall purpose of the project and can help lead the team in that direction. Um, so leadership, you know, is a key element of success. And I believe the two attributes of technical capability, you know, and those leadership attributes are, are key elements of success. Engineering is by its very nature um, an environment where we continue to try and progress uh, things that are there today to um, something better. And so innovation is extremely important. Uh, and whether you work for a big company or a small company, um, in order to innovate uh, keeps you uh, moving forward as a company, uh, longevity. And so uh, I think a lot of people see innovation at small companies, um, but at very large companies, it's uh, uh, extremely important as well. I believe, for one thing, uh, it's, it's a tiebreaker. You know, there are many people that come with, you know, good technical skills, you know, but if you can expand that, you know, with the idea of application, uh, innovation, so that you can bring uh, your technical know-how to create uh, useful products, that's important for business, you know, and so that's that really what separates, you know, leaders from from others. The ability to merge those uh, ideas uh, for a good business venture. So the uh, ELD program here at Penn State helps students to uh, enhance and, and progress their careers. Uh, because it's an environment where it's not a requirement to take uh, just 
to get an engineering degree, um, but it's uh, something that people elect to go ahead and take. And so as a company, we're looking for people um, that want to take on extra work within their environment. So everyone has a job that they do within their, their normal day, um, but there's a lot of ancillary things that need to happen in order to keep the company moving forward. And so when we're looking to hire people, we're looking for people who have uh, worked um, in many different activities, uh, who have taken on extra work, um, not again as a requirement, but as something that they've wanted to do to, uh, to improve themselves. I would say a level of maturity and a level of perspective that you're not going to get just strictly focused on the technical work. Um, you want to learn about things like management, management problems. If nothing else, even if you're not going to be the manager, so that you can understand how the manager, um, the problems that he or she is, is grappling with. And it's going to make you a better employee. And managers pick that up very, very quickly. I mean, even in an interview, it can be very, I won't say easily, but it can you can, get, you can pick up on an interview who has that capacity to actually kind of perceive what the problem is, how to think through it, and, and basically just make the manager's life easier because ultimately that's who the manager is going to hire.